Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and uh, we've been talking about how to get to know God intimately for since last August. And in order to do that, we've been talking about all kinds of subjects from in the Old and the New Testament, because I was taught that in order to really get to know God, you have to preach the whole counsel of God. And so uh, that's what we've endeavored to do. In order to get to know God intimately, we have to know how he thinks and why he does what he does. And so we, we've talked about quite a few subjects, and we just concluded talking about to drink or not to drink. Alcohol, drugs, and all that sort of stuff, individually, in the church, leadership in the church, running rampant. So I spent quite a bit of time on that because I wanted to share just what the Bible had to say about it. And that was quite a bit about on the subject of alcohol and answer all of the objections that I've heard throughout the years. So, and I did not, and I did not interject my own opinion or whatever I believe. I just shared what God had to say about it. So that's done. Now, what I would like to do just for a little bit, talk about me <laughs> and, and, and my testimony regarding alcohol and drugs. And maybe somebody that's listening to this can benefit from that and probably avoid, you know, some tragedies. While you say you look at Jim Caseman, well, <laughs> he's in the ministry, you know, and we're overseeing, you know, churches in, all over the world and Bible schools and things like that. Well, I did not become a Christian until I was 29 years old. So my life before that was nothing to brag about, that's for sure. I was raised, of course, uh, there were five of us siblings uh, with me, five children. We were raised on a farm in North Dakota. So uh, a lot of things were going on in the world that had not yet gotten to North Dakota, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. We were pretty sheltered in some ways and because uh, there's hardly any people in that state compared to other states and a lot of distance between little towns and uh but anyway we're on the farm and so i can remember as a child of course my uh, i would i would have to say my father was not an alcoholic and neither was my grandfather but uh, i know that dad would um, they drank beer that was the big thing back there uh you know this now we're, we're talking about back in the well, let's see in the 50s that's a long time ago and dad would even make you know, beer at home, you know, brew their own beard, you know, beer, I mean. And uh, and then we as kids would kind of get down there in the cellar and snitch some of it. Dad, of course, did smoke cigars, pipes. So I guess I was exposed. I guess that must be okay. My parents are doing it. Our parents, are, dad's drinking wine and he, he liked his, I don't know what it was. It was whiskey, but then I think he mixed brown sugar with it or something I don't know but he was really proud of that I remember that as a child so then I end up uh, then finally in a country school of course uh, well grades three through eight was in a one-room country school and where uh, the teacher had to deal with all eight grades one teacher all in one room and so she would teach, you know, with this particular, you know, grade six, and then she'd pick and then go shift over to grade seven and, and then come grade eight, whatever. And uh, of course I was grade three and she'd spend a little time with each one who, whatever grades they were in. That was really quite a challenge, I would think, for the teachers in those years. So I had the same teacher in grade school from grades three to grades eight. She happened to be a pastor of an evangelical free pastor and um, so we did begin uh, each day with uh, the Lord's Prayer, believe it or not. Nowadays, they won't let you do that, but the teacher did that. And um, so that was that. Uh, so then when I got to high school, this was a real cultural shock because now I'm in town. <laughs> uh, of course, our farm was eight miles south of town. And of course, we had to drive every day into, into Wishick. And um, so everything's okay, you know, probably first year or two. But then I began to be exposed to other young people in my junior year of high school. 
I got introduced to drinking, got into drinking. And in those years, uh, it was uh, instead of a big uh, marijuana party or, you know, heroin and all that sort of stuff, um, not, I didn't hear anything, didn't know anything about that. But we would have what's called keg parties on weekends. We'd find a place out in the country somewhere where, of course, we're all underage. We're not supposed to have alcohol. We're not old enough to buy it, so we usually have an adult buy it for us or some bartender that would do it, you know, kind of in the back room, sell us alcohol even though he shouldn't. So we'd have a whole keg of beer. And man, we would, uh, we would just get drunk as a skunk, <laughs> we would save on it. Didn't think anything of it. I mean, all the rest, all the other kids are doing it. Must be okay, you know, going with the majority, and uh, and uh, so that's how that happened. And so there'd be a lot of us getting together for these parties, and getting drunk. And then, of course, next thing you know, there's uh, some whiskey mixed in with all of this. So we're getting some stronger drinks. And then I had a friend of mine who quit high school in the junior year. And he ends up in the military. And then he ends up being stationed. I don't know. It would be about a two hours drive from my hometown. And so it ended up that in the military, he was also uh, worked in pharmacy. So he'd come home on weekends. And now in, in addition to the beer and the alcohol, and I don't even know what these things were. There were pills, all kinds of pills. Uh, you take some pills, you could stay awake for 48 hours. You take other pills and they'd bring you back down. And I don't know. But then we were mixing them with alcohol and found out years later that was really a bad combination with the drugs, the alcohol, and the whiskey. And, uh, and um, I, I just, uh, I, I got hooked on alcohol and drugs. Didn't know. In those years, there was no teaching about alcohol or drugs or anything like that and no education of any kind my in my thinking i guess an alcoholic would have been some old man laying in the gutter and face down in his own vomit you know in some big city you know i guess i that's about it and um so i would then at um uh, at uh, this 21 i'm also uh, now uh, a salesman and I remembered one of the conferences, you know, and I, if, I, if you don't think I was hooked, it was free alcohol served at the conference with the food, you know, everything, bringing all this, all of us salespeople into the home office. And I remember getting these free drinks, you know, two, three, you know, two glasses at a time, you could carry it. I run back to the motel room, set them in the tub, go back, get two more drinks, put them in the tub in the bathroom so that I'd have some something to drink during the night. But I remember that same night after the conference, uh, that meeting of, or the particular meeting that night, we went we went into a restaurant, you know, on, you know, 11 o'clock at night or what have you to get something to eat before we'd go to bed. And I remember I was sitting there at the counter with other people and all of a sudden I threw up in the restroom, in the, in the cafe, all over the counter. Now, I'm still in my very early 20s. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm 20, somewhere around 20 years old. And, um, I mean, crazy. Had no clue that I was now a full, that I had become really a full-blown alcoholic by the time, before I even got out of high school. But I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not hooked. I can drink moderately or oh, whatever. And uh, so that's how it all started. And so then you come about, uh, we get around November, December of 1963. And so then my friend is transferred. He's no longer stationed in North Dakota. He now has, I don't know, I think he was transferred to Hawaii or someplace. So unknown to me, I was hooked on these pills and now um, they're gone. He's no longer, he's gone. I mean, he's far away. But I didn't realize that I needed him. And the next thing you know, I, I'm not even drinking beer because I can't get high. I, you know, beer doesn't do anything for me. And so I'm drinking Canadian Windsor. That's whiskey. 
and I'm drinking it straight out of the bottle. And um, see, I was trying to get high, but it was not working like it used to work. And so for me now, I then in January, and let's see, in uh, February 9th, so towards the end of January, I find myself, thoughts are coming to my mind. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian. I've never read the Bible. Belong to a big dead denomination and, uh, and uh, never had to read the Bible. It was the pastor's job. Well, I see that I ran out of time, so we'll stop right there. And uh, I, uh, we'll just pick it up in the next session, <laughs> okay? So you'll be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do. Amen.